Zero Trust. What is it and why do we care? Well, I'm going to talk first to why do we care. So put simply, in today's hyper-connected world, where a lot of our assets are outside of the enterprise, the old castle and moat model no longer applies. So it's really about reducing risk to the enterprise or to the organization. And then the other reason we care is because of Executive Order 14028, which actually mandates federal agencies take on zero trust. And what we'll see from that is that cascading down through the ecosystem and appearing in service contracts and in standards that apply to regulated industries. So, defining what zero trust is, it's a philosophy. Um, and it's a philosophy that assumes that you've been breached. It replaces that historical um, model of castle and moat. And really, it has seven tenants from the NIST perspective that I call out here as every single call needs to be explicitly authorized, regardless of whether or not that is a user, a device, an application, or data. And the authorizations that sit behind there need to be dynamic. They need to be delivered based on the risk to the environment using contextual information such as, but not limited to, the health of the end user device, the data sensitivity, where that individual is calling from, and ultimately the threat situation or environment. So if an, if an enterprise is under attack, then clearly access decisions are modified. You will find that Mutual TLS, a protocol that deploys um, encryption at flight, will be high, highly used, and all data will be encrypted at rest as well. You'll also see that networks are segmented and controlled, and this reduces the blast radius or prevents an adversary moving laterally. And then finally, the integrity and security posture of all of the resources are monitored to feed into that contextual approval and access mechanism. Put bluntly, zero trust is not a technology and no single vendor can implement in its entirety. It is a philosophy, as we said at the start of this segment.